Hi guys, this is Simply Monica coming with another little video. Um, I'm calling it Oops, I Need a Spanking. Now, now, the reason why is because I almost jacked my hair up. And um, I hate to do that, but since a lot of things have been going on in the last couple of months with my mom and everything, I haven't had really time to think about, you know, my hair in a proper fashion as far as products and product usage. So, um, in the winter, I have, um, you know, my hair is dense. It is. And, um, you know, it needs a lot of products, but it doesn't like too much product. So, in the winter, when it starts getting cold and so forth, even in the fall, I need less product because there's no sun to bake it. There's no, there's no way, environmental-wise, the product is going to come off because it's cold. So, um, I need less product and an easier shampoo and conditioner. Uh, uh, an easier shampoo and a better conditioner. Now, in the summer, being that it's sunny, it's hot, it's sweaty and so forth, I sweat a lot. So, I have to use more product, product in my hair because it is sunny and hot. And by the time you use product in your hair in the day, you go out, you come back home, your hair is bone dry. Why? Because it's the sun, the humidity, the dampness, the, you know, all that stuff uh, plays a part in um, the product that's on your hair and how much is left and how it bakes your hair and stuff like that. And with locks, you can't afford to have brittle locks, you know. Brittle locks mean breakage. So, um, and I don't want my hair laying on the bed after I get up. So, you know, and the problem I was having was as it started getting colder, I was still using the same type of products I would, would use for the summer. And that's a problem because it started causing buildup on my scalp. My locks were just fine, but on my scalp, it started causing buildup. And um, I have to, I can't grease my scalp per se, but I have to get some oils and moisture to the scalp, you know. I'm not going to sit there and part and grease my scalp but I need some sort of spray or something to get in there a little bit because it'll start itching and so forth but it needs to be moisturized so yeah it's a nice little dance that I have to do there and um, so what I was using for the winter is what you've seen probably in my other videos is the Bonner's um, Peppermint Castile Soap which I love it's great yeah, I equate this to the apple cider vinegar rinse, rinse, which I don't do anymore. I used to do it, but I don't do it anymore because um, it strips your hair too much. I mean, way too much. It gets all that gunk out and all that stuff is great, but when you look at your hair afterwards, it is so stripped and dry and brittle. And for me, the repair work to get that moisture back in there is not worth it for me. So I don't even bother with that anymore. But with the Dr. Bonner's peppermint soap is good because it, it almost does the same thing. It strips your hair, but it can strip your hair too much. So I was using this exclusively before with no other shampoos, no whatever. And um, it was too much, as we, especially as we went into the colder weather. Now in the warmer weather, it's okay because I have a lot of products. So I need to get that product off. You can't afford to, again, have product on top of product on top of product on your hair and wonder why your hair is not growing or it's itching or whatever have you. So, um, that's fine. But for the winter, being that I need less product and being that there's no environmental reasons to take all the products out of my hair, like sun, humidity, and so forth, then this doesn't help me. It just causes, you know, itching and strips everything out of my hair and so forth. So, I used that and then I was using um, this as well with it. These two are on the opposite sides of the spectrum. This strips your hair almost completely. This almost doesn't strip your hair enough. So, you had, um, um, so I was combining these a little bit to get a you know, even um, washing, but that caused product on my scalp. Then I was using a pomade as well as an uh, everyday greaser, but it was just too much for my hair. 
and my hair started to react. My hair told me, it darned me and knocked on my shoulder and said, look, we, we don't like this, Benjamin. Okay, <laughs> what are you doing? We don't like it. We don't want it. Stop it now or else you'll find me on the floor in a few minutes. So, I listened. You have to listen to your hair. Your hair speaks volumes. So, I said, I need to change my hair. Also, I've been thinking about freeforming. Not free for me totally, I'll do the YouTube made up word, semi free for me. And the reason why is my hair likes to be free. It likes to do its own thing, always has. It doesn't like restriction, it says something about its owner, right? Mm. But it doesn't like restriction, it doesn't like, you know, to be tied down and tied up, then forced to do something it don't want to do. It just wants to do its own thing and go. Now I say semi free for me because I'm still going to maintain the parts. I'm still gonna um, lightly twist it every now and then, and not not twist it as far as clips and all that stuff is concerned, but as far as just for neatness sake and to keep the parts and again pop the um the the hairs and stuff like that. I definitely don't want anybody to marry. I don't want to combine my locks or anything like that. But I'm just going to style it less and um to just let it do its own thing. So with that being said, because my hair grows, and that's how my hair grew so much before, is because it just, I just let it go, you know, just let it go and do its own thing, and tell you the truth, that's the best way, so, and definitely that's the best way for me. So what I use now is, which is what my regimen is going to be probably permanently, is I'm using the Suave Naturals Shampoo. Because it doesn't strip, and again it's winter, so it doesn't strip my hair too much. So I have this, and I usually wash my hair about three times. And because my hair is dense, it, it's thick in there, and it's tough to get the water in and so forth. So I need a good clean scalp, especially if I'm going to be washing it every three weeks. I need a good clean scalp, you know, to last me that period of time. Not, not stripped, but a clean scalp. So I'm using the shampoo, and then I need a conditioner. Conditioner is very important because it helps seal in the moisture and so forth. Now, I've tried the conditioner to this. I've tried it. I don't like it. It's um, drying to my hair for some odd reason. And um, it just doesn't make my hair feel soft and warm and bathed and, you know, ooey gooey and loved and stuff like that. So, I used this, which is what I've used before. I'm telling you, I need to spank it. Which is what I've used before. When my hair was longer and, it, you know, a couple of years ago or whatever have you. Fine, I've used it. And it works. And it works for me. And it made my hair feel loved and soft and everything. Pantene conditioner. Smooth and sleek. See that? Pantene conditioner. Basically, what white people use is with amino proteins. So proteins is always good for hair and good for natural hair and everything. And it's smooth and sleek. So it basically straightens straightens my hair in a way, and it makes it lay down and it makes it soft. That's the whole key that I wanted and was looking for. It makes it soft. It makes it lay down. It doesn't strip my hair. And mind you, when I put the the um the stuff on. Unless I haven't used conditioner in a while, then I'll sit under the, the cap and I would, um, the shower cap, and I would let it sit on for a while. But usually, it works so fast, I put it on and I take it right off. So I put it on, make sure it's all over my hair, on the locks and everything like that. I wait about two minutes and I take it right off, literally. Because I don't want product buildup. I don't want, you know, any sort of issues with my hair. So I just wanted to do this job and that's it. It works. I've used it for years and it works. I love it. It gives me moisture, not too much moisture. Great. Next, I said, well, I see everybody with their little water bottles and stuff on YouTube with their little oils and whatever have you. I don't like oil on my hair. I don't like um, products and all that extra stuff on my hair. But of course, to keep healthy hair, to keep it moist, to keep it growing and so forth, you got to put something on your hair. I was using a homemade pomade, which I've shown you in other videos, and that's okay, but when you put it on the lock, 
put it on the, the locks, it, um, I can't even get my locks out. When you put it on the locks, it just coats the locks. And you, it just, like, almost like a grease buildup after a while. But, so I was like, that's not going to work for me this time. I need something that seeps, like, into the roots, and, but it's not heavy and weighing my hair down and stuff like that. I'm telling you, I strayed totally far from my normal routine. I don't know what happened. Anyway, so, I um, got my water bottle, and I got oil. Now, oils I already had in the house. Now, I don't like olive oil. I don't like any scented oils. I don't like any of that stuff. That's just me personally. Um, also, you know, people use uh, tea trees and olives and olive oils and um, lavenders and essential oils and all these extra things. And to me, I don't want to put stuff on my hair anyway, let alone all these extra oils. I don't think you need five different oils for your hair. If it's going to grow, it's going to grow. If it's going to moisturize, it's going to moisturize. You don't need all these extra pieces and all that stuff for your hair. And then you walk around smelling like a rose bush, <laughs> you know, it's not going to help. So, I kept this simple. That's why I'm simply Monica. And um, I use extra virgin coconut oil. See? 100% um, organic. And I used about three teaspoons of that because, again, it's oily. Now, look at this oil compared to the um, Jamaican black castor oil. Two different things. This oil moves and shakes. It'll blend in a little bit better. That Jamaican black castor oil, even in water, I don't like it. Next is, and coconut oil, you know, they say grows your hair and it's good for your whole body, inside and outside. Great. So, then I use tea tree oil, which is very good for your hair as well. So, as you see, um, salon size Hollywood Beauty tea tree oil. Okay, nothing special. I use about three teaspoons of this as well. Now, again, I barely don't want, I barely want to put anything on my hair, so I'm not going to use a whole bunch of oil. So, I got maybe six teaspoons of this in the bottle. So, um, so let's say one part of this and three parts of water. So, um, and, and also this seems like a lot of water, but I don't want it oily on my hair. I don't want my hair oily. I want it to have the minimum amount of moisture because you're supposed to spritz your hair every day, at least every other day. So I don't want product buildup again. So, so I just put it all in a little bottle. I use some, but put it all in a little bottle, and I spritz my hair, and being that I'm going towards the size of free-forming, that I don't have to worry about, you know, oh, my, my edges need to be tight, and oh, I got to twist my hair every two days, so I can't put this in there, I can't do this, and I can't, I don't need that. That's the beauty of free-forming. I love it, and maybe if I would have started off differently, started off, because I started off um, in the twist method. But maybe if I um, started off with free forming, then you know it, my my regimen and so forth would be different. But I love free forming for the freedom of it. That's that's pretty much the only reason why I love free forming is because it's free. Your hair gets to do whatever it wants to do. You're not so concentrated on all oh, my parts and oh it has to be tight on this side or oh you know it's manicured and maintained and you know all these things and it makes you crazy. Trying to maintain your hair every two weeks, three weeks, or whatever, especially if you have a lot of locks, it makes you crazy. It really does. But um, I've grown out of that, being that I'm an old lockhead now. I've grown out of the stage that it has to be perfect and it has to look, you know, just so and, you know, all that stuff. But, um, you know, so I've been using this and I think I'm going to use some today. And I use it at night and I only use the bare minimum. And I spray it on, and I braid up my hair. And I braid it so that I get, I don't like, you know, my hair hanging on my neck and it's all oily and greasy. I braid up my hair, then the next day it's dry, I take it out, and it's fine. It's moisturized, my hair has a little body to it because it's braided. And um, it looks, you know, it looks good, it does its job. So, um, and also be careful if you're going to take that recommendation by putting it in and braiding your hair at night. Because your hair could mildew. 
Now, mind you, I do it around 5 o'clock if my bedtime is at 9 or 10 o'clock. And the reason why is because you don't want um, this, uh, water in your hair in some sort of tight style because it will make your hair mildew and rot. So, that's my disclaimer to you. Be careful. So, this is what I use and I'm more into the free-forming method. And uh, I'm still going to maintain my locks. I'm still going to, as, as far as keeping the part, and I don't want anybody to marry or join together or have a reunion and all that stuff. And, um, you know, but I'm just going to let it do what it does and, you know, keep it simple. So, this is my new regimen. Hopefully, my hair will love it. It has so far. So, um, I think that's it. Have a good one. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Um, look for the next videos, and I will see you later.